Hey guys, CJ with George Astronomy. Welcome back. It is January 2021, and uh, this video is a little bit late. I wanted to get it out right at the beginning of the month, but that didn't happen. So, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. 2020 as a dumpster fire is now over. So, uh, this video, let's talk about the Radiant Raptor. Radian is a in-house company that was uh, founded and built up by OPT. Radian came out with, I think, originally the Triad filter. However, they have come out now, I think, with a new tripod, uh, a carbon fiber tripod, along with some little accessory items like a, a laser pointer and uh, some plates, stuff like that. But the most recent thing they came out with was the Raptor, the Radiant Raptor, which is a 61 millimeter uh, APO triplet refractor made for astrophotographers by astrophotographers, which sounds great in theory. And I was really looking forward to getting the scope and seeing exactly what was done with it and what made it so special. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover in this video. Uh, exactly, well, I'm not going to do an unboxing. Honestly, I hate unboxing videos. And there's plenty of them out there. As a matter of fact, OPT has their own unboxing video uh, by, by the gentleman out there, which basically covers it all. It's exactly what's in the box. Um, so I'm not going to do that. It's just redundant to me. I don't like unboxing videos. But I am going to go over some of the features that uh, the, were claimed on it and what I actually thought about those. So without further ado, let's get us started. Okay, to cover some key points uh, on the Raptor, let's just go down the marketing list of, of what they build on their website. So first off, it's a 61 millimeter aperture, which has a 270, 275 millimeter focal length. It is F4.5, it is an APO triplet. Uh, it is designed with full frame image circle and it weighs in about four pounds as stock without anything else on it. It includes a flattener. It also has a 10 to one factory tuned focuser a two inch filter vault. Uh, the focuser in the camera it has the ability to be able to be rotated 360 degrees, so independent of each other. Uh, a dew shield, of course, not, I mean, that's pretty much standard. Uh, and it comes with custom hex rings with integrated cable management channels. And this is what they have on their website as being their marketing. Some of the extras that come standard include a soft uh, case backpack both a six and a half inch D style plate and a four inch style V style dovetail plate. Uh, comes with caps for both the telescope itself as well as the field flattener. They include both metric and imperial bolts, which is a nice feature. And then finally you get a dust cloth along with a moon phase chart, which is actually kind of cool. And then a radiant sticker. Uh, upgraded items include uh, basically an Optech designed automated focuser, and you can also get the visual back attachment in the event you wanted to use uh, use it for visual use uh, with like two inch filters or whatever. Now the net price is nine hundred ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents. So yes, it is a thousand dollars. I I don't still don't know why people just use that cents thing. To me, it makes no sense. Just call it a thousand dollars. As far as aesthetics, it looks nice with the black and the red accents and the build quality seems good, just like most name brand APO triplets that are out there on the market. What I liked about it, uh, this included the corrector is a nice touch. While other manufacturers will occasionally supply with their scopes as a promotional item, the fact that it is standard and the included price is great because frankly a corrector is required for astrophotography on refractors. This is not to say another manufacturer does not include one as well as stock, which we will be going over later on as we do a side-by-side -side comparison. Being able to rotate the camera is very ideal in my opinion. While setting up the scope for my rig, I had to rotate the focuser to make my mounting work. That of course changed the camera rotation, so it was nice to be able to quickly and simply reorient to what I needed and being able to do this independent of each other is kind of a nifty idea. Now I do like the ring design quite a lot. The rings can be mounted in any position and all sides include mounting holes for accessories. Now this is kind of convenient. What I didn't like about the rings, which other rings do tend to have, is a recess in order for cap head bolts to go into so that they're not sitting on or marring up your telescope itself. The locks have a safety mechanism in place that keeps the rings from popping open uh, completely, which could keep accidental drops from occurring, though honestly I've never had this issue in the past. But additionally, the channels to route your cables are nice, albeit small. 
but having anything at all is still nice and it worked perfectly well for me to route the two do strap cables that I had running off the scope. I like the fact that there is an included filter vault, though practicality does say otherwise. We'll get to more on that a little bit later. I love that they included both metric and imperial screws to use. <clears throat> this means a lot as you never know when you're gonna try to find the right size, the right thread, the right type of screw in your box when you get a new scope. Half the time when I'm doing new mountings because no scope ever mounts exactly identical on my rig based on the different ones I've had, which means I usually have to find a different screw, different length, different style. So the fact that they include both of them on there, very, very nice feature. I also have to point out that the fact that they include two different type of mounting plates, both uh, the V style, the D style V, and as well as the Lismandy style, is actually really kind of nice. The fact that you don't have to go and get one because you're not unsure about your setup is a nice feature. However, in my particular case, it didn't matter anyway because I still had to go f buy a new bar. Now, that being said, the one included one was worthwhile because it's what I used to mount my guide scope on. So, if, if, you, if you don't need it, you're awesome. If you do need it, you're also awesome though you may still have to buy another one anyway. I'll go over that a little bit more in a minute. The travel backpack is a nice addition, though there are some other manufacturers that also provide included cases. And honestly, some are a lot higher quality than this one. If you look at, let's say, uh, a Stel uh, the Stellar View, you get a really nice case, and it doesn't need to be a backpack. A suitcase style is just fine with me, and it is a lot better padded. So while I appreciate the fact that they're giving us one, um, uh, it could have been worth more. Okay, what are some of the bad things? Because there are caveats to everything that is good. So let's start off with this, the filter vault. Now it's a nifty kind of feature, but it is difficult to get your two inch filters into. They're uh, extremely difficult to put in with your, your two fingers because the vault is just not wide enough. And honestly, you can't place it in and turn it. There just isn't enough room. What I found I had to do is either to drop it in or to hold it sort of at an angle, place it in, and then turn it up to where it drops and then using just the tips of my fingers to try to screw the, the, the uh, filter in. Which quite honestly is a real pain in the, you know what, however, if you don't have a filter vault, or excuse me, if you don't have a filter wheel, then you're fine. You know, this works perfectly, especially if you're not gonna be swapping filters out all night. Certainly, I would definitely suggest that if you uh, are gonna be swapping filters out, go ahead and get yourself a camera spanner wrench, uh, especially one with the, with the elongated uh, prongs that come down. It will ease in helping you to get these put in and you're less likely to fingerprint up your filters when you're installing them into the thing. So again, nice idea, great concept, uh, but the execution was pretty poor. So back to the mounting. While I said it was pretty cool that they give you two different style mounting options in order to put onto your, your rig, I can only use one. I'm very limited with the CM25P, which is just the V style. So I had to go with that in order to put it on there, but the fact of the matter is four inches is just not enough. I've never heard that before in my life. Four inches was just not enough, and because of the balance of it, there was no way that was gonna work out for me. And uh, as everybody knows, when you're using, when, when you are balancing your scope, <clears throat> you have to have enough real estate to be able to slide things forward and back. There just isn't enough with four inch. So while the concept was awesome, and would work perfectly like in a star tracker or something along those lines, it doesn't work so well on a standard mount when you're trying to achieve good balance. Let the fight begin. Okay, some of the positives on the SharpStar 61 that uh, also matches the Raptor. First off, it is a 61 millimeter f4.5. Uh, it retails at $649 though, so it is a little bit cheaper than the Raptor. It also includes a flattener in that price, has a 10 to 1 focuser. It includes a V-style plate. It also includes a finder scope bracket, which you can also use for a guide scope bracket there for the uh, shoe. And the focuser rotates as well. Now what it does not include is uh, you, even though you can rotate the camera, but you can only do it with the compression fitting there. So unless you're putting some sort of a mechanical connection in that uh, imaging train, 
you're basically going to be stuck with using the compression rings in order to spin your camera around. Uh, keeping that in mind, it also does not have an M48 mechanical connection, which honestly I would prefer a mechanical connection on anything versus compression fittings. Uh, does not come with a case, but doesn't mean you can't get out there and buy one for it. And it only includes a V-style mounting, so unlike the Raptor, it does not include a List Mandy style as well. And of course, there is no filter vault. So if you wanted to match the Sharp Star up to everything that you would get on the Raptor, you would have to go out and buy a Lismondi plate. That's about $65 or so. If you wanted some sort of a filter drawer or a filter vault to use with it and you didn't want to buy a filter wheel, uh, you're looking at a filter drawer from ZWO. That's about $79. And then if you wanted a case for it, you're going to probably, the closest thing I could find that would you could use with it would be like a Williams Optics Zenith Star case. That's about $49. So you got a grand total of $842. So the difference between that and your Raptor is $157.99. Now, what do you get for the $157.99? $158 right there. $158. I'm kidding. Uh, this is the magnetic lunar calendar that you get with the, with the Raptor. It just tells you what nights are new moon nights for uh, in the month, which this is a conversation starter. This goes on the refrigerator. Friends come over, they look at it, and they're like, hey, what is this? That's it. Not worth 158 bucks. Uh, if you wanted to see, you know, how, where would you make up 158 bucks if you bought the Sharp Star and you wanted all those extras that came with the Raptor? Uh, you're spending 800 bucks. That extra money is probably worth my time that is spent online at different distributors trying to find the item I need. It's for shipping costs to get it to where I am. Uh, and, you know, honestly, it's to save a little bit of a hassle. The only thing I had to go out and buy was a new Vix, was a new V-Style bar for the Raptor, which I would have had to have done with the, uh, with the, the Sharp Star anyway. So why would I spend all that extra money? Why would I go through that, especially if they had things that I didn't care about? Well, to be quite honest with you, there's a couple of things uh, to start with is uh, not only is the fact that the, rot that the uh, focuser is rotatable, because uh, obviously with the longer uh, V-style, I had to rotate this to the top, so I didn't have any choice behind that. But the other thing is the fact that I can rotate the camera 360 degrees dependent, uh, independent of what my focuser would be. Um, that is pretty much an unstoppable reason right there. I don't even know if unstoppable is right, but that would be one of the primary reasons. And then the second reason is the fact that this is a mechanical connection. So this is an M48 thread, which goes right into my spacers, right into the camera. This is a mechanical connection. It's not gonna fall off in the middle of the night. Unlike your uh, Sharp Star, which has got the compression fittings, um, I don't trust compression fittings, I never have. Even when I have had them on scopes uh, early on in my hobby, uh, I actually always use a safety lanyard around the camera in order to connect it to the scope because I was always worried about them loosening up. Uh, also not to mention the fact that compression rings, sometimes you'll get a skew uh, one way or the other, so your, your camera is not perfectly seated. You could get the same thing on a Sharp Star if you went with like a Moonlight Focuser because Ron does have flanges that have the M48 or M42 threads that you could then thread on there. But now we're talking a lot more money. Those two reasons, mechanical connection and I can rotate the camera. That made it worthwhile for me. It may not be the same for you, but it made it worthwhile for me. So that's it, that's all I've got for you. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. I will have another video coming out here shortly that will have the first light photos from it. We'll actually have several uh, first light photos, second and third light photos that I've been working on here, here just recently. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to, please be sure to like the video, hit subscribe, and put down in the comments below your opinion on the Radiant Raptor, what you liked about it or don't like about it. If you have any questions, also feel free to put them in the comments below. My name is CJ, and you're watching Georgia Astronomy.